Alright, gonna go ahead and refute this video by Steven Anderson where he tries to say, typical of post-trip heretics, he tries to say that the tribulation and the wrath are, are two different things. Because they have to make the tribulation as a title. So whenever the Bible says, talks about Christians going through tribulation, they have to say, see, we're going through the tribulation. Well, the Bible never uses the words the tribulation as a title. That then shall there be a great tribulation. It's a description, but never a title. The title is the time of Jacob's trouble determined upon thy people Israel. But post-trip heretics can't see that, and you're going to see this clearly with Anderson. So let's get right into refuting this. And to wait for his son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, even Jesus, which delivered us from the wrath to come. So in this scripture, we have a reference to waiting for the second coming of Jesus Christ and deliverance from the wrath to come. Now, a little bit later in chapter 3, the Bible talks about in verse number 3 that no man should be moved by these afflictions, for yourselves know that we are appointed thereunto. For verily, when we were with you, we told you before that we should suffer tribulation, even as it came to pass. Um, yeah, that's true. Christians, we do suffer persecution in this life. It doesn't mean we're going to be facing seven years of God's wrath during the time of Jacob's trouble. You know, post trib they always do this. They always look for verses where it says tribulation for Christians, and they say, see, we're going to go through the tribulation. Again, it's never a title, it's a description, but they have to make it into a title. And ye know. So what we have here in chapter 3 is the mention that we are appointed to tribulation in this life. If you are saved, if you're a child of God, and if you have any interest in serving God, you have an appointment with tribulation. That's what the Bible says here. He says, don't be moved by these afflictions. He doesn't want us to be shaken or moved. He says, you know that you're appointed to these afflictions. For verily when uh, we... Yes, all, those, all them that live godly in Christ Jesus, Jesus shall, suffer, shall suffer persecution. Paraphrasing, of course. But it doesn't mean we're going to be going into the time of Jacob's trouble. It just means we're suffering persecution in this life. Who can't see that? With you, we told you before that we should suffer tribulation even as it came to pass and you know then in chapter five yeah, it says suffer tribulation never says we're going to go into the tribulation there's the oft quoted verse in verse number nine where it says for god hath not appointed us to wrath but to obtain salvation by our lord jesus christ so consistently what we see in first thessalonians are mentions of us being delivered from the wrath of god not suffering wrath at God's hand, but that we will go through tribulation. And if so again, they have to make the wrath and the tribulation, the tribulation, not even a real term, uh, two different things. Okay, the it's never a title. Okay, the title for this coming time period is Jer in Jeremiah chapter thirty verse seven. Alas, for that day is great, so that none uh, is like it. It is even the time of Jacob's trouble, but he shall be saved out of it. It is called the time of Jacob's trouble. It's never called the Great Tribulation. Okay? And if you want to see some proof for a pre-time Jacob's trouble catching away, I'll show you some. First of all, they always like to run to Matthew chapter 24 and say, see, it proves after the Tribulation. Now, I'm going to show you a bunch of scriptures that prove that the rapture, the catching up of the Bride of Christ is before the time of Jacob's trouble. So they go in Matthew chapter 24, verse 29 to 31. They'll say, immediately after the tribulation of those days. They'll say, see, it says after the tribulation. But they'll say, uh, this proves a the rapture before the time of Jacob's trouble. you got many problems here. Let me show you this. Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heaven shall be shaken, and then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, for, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory, and he shall send his angels with the sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds from one end of heaven to the other. Okay, this is not about the rapture. How do we know? Because there's no mention of dead saints rising first. There's no mention of God speaking with his voice like a trumpet. Okay, he shall send his angels with the great sound of a trumpet. It's not him speaking with his voice like a trump or a trumpet. Okay, so this cannot be about the rapture or the catching up with the bride of Christ because the rapture is not a biblical term. Because there's no mention of dead saints rising first and there's no mention of God speaking with his voice like a trump. Okay, but here's some proof for a pre-time Jacob trouble catching away. Okay, Ephesians chapter 1, verse number 10 
to 13. But in the dispensation, oh no, dispensation, yes it is a biblical word to all you non-dispensational heretics, of the fullness of times he might gather together in one all things in Christ which are in heaven, I'm sorry, both which are in heaven and which are on earth, even in him, in whom also we have attained an inheritance, being predestinated according, according to the purpose of him who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will, that we should be to the praise of his glory who first trusted in Christ, in whom ye also trusted after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after that ye believed, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise, eternal security, you're sealed with the Holy Spirit, which is the earnest of our inheritance unto the redemption of the purchased possession unto the praise of his glory. Okay? This has to happen before the time of Jacob's trouble. Why? Let me show you why. Revelation chapter 14. Just keep in mind, you're sealed, okay? Revelation chapter 14, verse 9 through 11. And the third angel followed him, saying with a loud voice, If any man, not just unsaved people, if any man, worship the beast in his image, and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation. And he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels, and in the presence of the Lamb, and their torment, and the smoke of their torment ascendeth up for ever and ever. And they have no day, no rest day nor night, who worship the beast in his image, and whosoever receiveth the mark of his name. Okay, so wait a second, you're sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise, but what if you take the mark? If we go into the time of Jacob's trouble, we could take the mark and guess lose that seal. But it would make God a liar. So you have a contradiction there. That that event described in uh, Ephesians chapter 1 where he gathers together uh, the, his elect, the Christians. He does elect, can also be referred to Christians too. Gather together all one who are, all who are in Christ. Jesus will say it that way. Um, this has to happen before the time of Jacob's trouble because we're sealed. But if we go into this time period, we could take the mark and lose our salvation. Okay? Proof number one. Here's another proof for it. Second Thessalonians chapter two, verse one. Now we beseech your brethren by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and by our gathering together with them, that ye be not so soon shaken in mind, nor be troubled, neither by spirit, nor by word, nor by letter, for as from us, that the, as that the day of Christ is at hand. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first, and the man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. And they always stop at verse number three. post rubbers they always stop at verse three. They won't keep reading. Who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God, or that is worship, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Remember ye not that when I was yet with you, I told you these things? Now, sorry, and now ye know that withholdeth that he might be revealed in his time. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work, and only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. And then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Okay? The he is the Holy Spirit. To let, will, let, will let until he be taken out of the way. The he that needs to be taken out of the way is the body of Christ. How do we know? Because keep in mind, he needs to be taken out of the way. The body of Christ has to be taken out of the way. How do we know that? Revelation chapter 5, verse 9. And they sung a new song, saying, Thou art worthy to take the book, and to open the seals thereof. For thou wast slain, and hast redeemed us to God by thy, gut, blood, by thy blood, out of every kindred, tongue, and people, and nation. Okay? You have blood-redeemed saints who are in heaven. Before the Antichrist is revealed, in Revelation chapter 6, verse 2. And I saw, and behold, a white horse, and he that sat on him, had a bow and a crown, and was given to, unto him, and he went forth conquering and to conquer. So wait a second, he couldn't now let it fall until he be taken out of the way. Someone needs to be taken out of the way before the Antichrist can show up. You have blood redeemed saints in Revelation chapter 5 verse 9, who are in heaven before the Antichrist is revealed in Revelation 6 too. Hmm? How do you get around that? We are, the body of Christ, we are hindering the Antichrist from showing up. Okay, as long as we're on the earth, the Antichrist cannot show up. We have to be taken out of the way so he could, before he can show up. That's why you see blood redeemed saints who are in heaven before the Antichrist is revealed. Uh, another good proof text is Second uh, Timothy chapter one verse seven. For God hath not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. We're not we don't have the spirit of fear. But don't tell me you can read the events of Revelation and not get a spirit of fear, thinking you're going to go in into the, to that time period. You're going to get a spirit of fear. But God hath not given us a spirit of fear. Hmm? How do you reconcile that? Romans chapter 8, verse 35 to 39. 
Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or pearl, or sword? As it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long, we are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Jesus Christ Jesus our Lord. Okay? True for today, but is this true in the times when you have trouble, that nothing can separate you from, from the love of God? Uh, no. What if you take the mark of the beast? Again, Revelation 14, 9 through 11. If any man takes it, they go to hell. How do you reconcile that? It's a contradiction there. So, th there, there's many, many more proofs for a pre time of Jacob trouble catching away. Those are, just, those, are just, those are just some of them. But don't be deceived by this heresy of a post tribulation rapture. It is Catholic, it comes from the Catholic Church, and being propagated by cultists like Stephen Anderson. So, don't be deceived. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. Thank you.